Hello the racing fans, welcome back to the channel, proudly sponsored by betting.co.uk. Thanks for joining me again here on the channel. Uh, this is actually the first episode back of what is going to be the return of my weekend previews, my daily videos, my stable tours, my golf tips and all of the rest of the good stuff. Now what I'm going to be doing in my weekend previews, I will start loading up with my best bets possibly some long shots, even just some notable runners across the card that could be worth a second look, whether that be from a betting perspective or purely out of interest of good breeding or a horse that we've backed before, many other reasons. But this is just going to be the start of getting to the return of the videos and hopefully we can find a few winners along the way. It's actually been a nice turn of form in recent weeks. I put up some nice winners um, over on Twitter and the majority, of course, over on betting.co.uk as well. We've managed to land a couple of lucky 15s. We've had some nice trebles going too. Uh, so we're really going to try and kick on now for the rest of the season and try and earn a few more pounds of profit. Uh, before I go on to um, the weekend preview for this week though, just um, a reminder that courtesy of BetMGM, you can sign up as a new customer and place about £10 and with that you will get £40 in free bets all from betting.co.uk. I will put the link in the description below. That's just new customers, normal T and C's apply. And of course, the number one rule, always please do gamble responsibly. But these sign-up offers do help out a little bit in that sense to give you a bit of extra funds for the weekend. Now, as I said, the weekend previews, we usually contain uh, notable runners, my best bets. However, um, as this is the first one of a new season, I thought I'd tackle three of the difficult handicaps that we've got for Saturday's racing. One coming from Sandown and then two over at York. And we'll start off actually over at Sandown. We've got the 205, the Bet MGM handicap over one mile. 16 runners, and this is very competitive. Um, probably quite easy to make a case for a few of the runners in this field, but I do have quite a strong fancy here at the same time. First of all, though, if we have a look, we've got Flying Frontier here for James Tate at 11 to 2. He is a very interesting type and, again, a likely improver as the season goes on. But I'm not totally convinced that he is going to be ready first time out. He's had about 270 days off the track and that would be a concern for me. Not as much on a normal day, but he is coming up against the older horses. So I think he's going to probably strip fitter for this and he will need to if he's going to be beating the likes of some of these older horses in the race. I don't think he's quite got the class yet, but I would definitely keep Flying Frontier in mind for the future. Um, then if we have a look at uh, Dual Identity, he's a nice horse for William Knight. Um, probably another one with a decent chance as well as a course and distance winner. Um, but he is now off a career high mark and perhaps would need a little bit more on this occasion to actually win. But regardless of repeat performance of last time, I would make him go pretty close here nonetheless. However, the one I think you've got to be taking a second look at here... Um, quite an original, uh, not a very original selection. However, it is the Roger Teal trained dancing magic. He's five to one here. He's currently actually just gone out to 11 to two, but he's a nice four year old by Camelot. And to me, he just looked primed for a big run this time out. He seemingly um, needed the run first time out at Newbury on his four year old debut, but he did actually come on plenty for that as well. He was a nice traveler through the race. And even though he got a prominent ride, I think William Buick actually made a few mistakes um, at next time out um, at Chester when he finished second. He did go off quite fast, but I wouldn't want to see him too prominent. I'd like him just to sit a little bit behind the pace. And I actually think that was probably the plan, but he just broke so quick out of the gates that it was hard really to get him uh, pulled back into position. Um, that was a step back in the right direction, though, over seven furlongs. The step up to the mile is something that he definitely should appreciate. And even though he is still a maiden at this point in time, he does bring group uh, group form, group three form into this race from last season. And his mark of 95 probably underestimates his ability. So even though he might look a little bit of a tricky customer on paper, this is actually a horse trending in the right direction. He's a nice traveller, and I think with a better ride this time with Oshi Murphy in the saddle, he has to go really, really close here indeed. I know I mentioned about Flying Frontier going up against the older horses and maybe struggling on that basis. Dancing Magic is also a four-year-old coming up against the older horses, but he has had two runs already this season, and that group form is absolutely key. As I said, he steps up to a mile as well, and that should just help his cause that little bit more. Then if we go over and take a look at York, we've got the Queen Mother's Cup handicap over a mile and a half. 
Um, this is actually for the amateur female jockeys. It's going to be a really decent race to watch, actually. And Star Jasmine is obviously going to be quite popular here. She's a really nice traveller. Um, finished runner-up on her first two starts, but she did break her maiden at Bath last time out and seemingly appreciated the step-up and trip that day. However, this time, she does have to go up a further three furlongs. And again, even though that might bring out a little bit more improvement in her, I'd like to see a bit of form over this trip before getting involved. Um, she finished third actually last time out. It was a pretty decent run because the winning distance was a short neck. She went very well. I'm probably going to improve for that again. But similar to the um, aspect about Fly in Frontier, I just think she'll struggle coming up against a few of the older horses uh, this time out. In this race, though, again, this is the 150 at York. Um, I fancy the Ralph Beckett trained at Lord Melbourne here who... Definitely improved plenty for his handicap debut uh, to finish just two lengths off Bolster at Epsom last time out. Bolster's going to turn into be a seriously smart horse. I put him up that day as well, so he's one we're quite familiar with. We've got a good angle on Bolster. And Lord Melbourne actually just finished two lengths back of him um, that day. But he's a horse that's starting to get the hang of things as he gets more experience under his belt. And with stamina assured, I think Lord Melbourne's just going to be sitting off the back of the pace and going to play his cards late. He definitely gets my vote. Um, this time out in the opener, he gets the ride under Serena Brotherton, who's got some pretty good rides around here previously at York, which I like. Um, and I'm not too keen on front runners here. So Lord Melbourne sitting off the plate, off the pace, well handicapped. I think he's got to go really well at seven to one, and that's a pretty decent each way price, in my opinion. Then again, we stay at York for the two twenty five. We've got the Skybet handicap over seven furlongs here. Um, Pretty decent race here. We've got a few horses um, that are probably better at the sprint trips. I know this is seven furlongs. You could class it as perhaps a sprint. But there's a few horses that I definitely don't like in this field. So it's quite easy to narrow down the field to start off with. The current favourite here, though, is um, New Image for the David Amara team. He's actually got three wins from his last five starts now. Likely to continue on an upward curve, but he still needs to prove to me that he can handle this sort of undulating track here at York. I think course form at York is absolutely vital. And without actually seeing him at the moment over this sort of course, I just got a feeling he's going to be better suited to the flatter tracks. And that may come, obviously, further down the line. Um... I'm just not totally convinced that he's going to handle York. So at 5-1, I'm going to take him on. Boardman's an interesting runner here, actually. He does have a bit of course and distance form. He is getting on a little bit. His best days are probably behind him. But he always saves his best form for the faster surfaces. And he did actually perhaps turn a corner last time out of Chester. He is actually going to have to improve off the back of that once again. But he is actually a horse that shouldn't be underestimated this time based on the conditions that he got typically suit his favour. The one to side with, though, and he, he is a little bit risky because he's a tricky customer to win with. However, Woven, for me, ran a blinder here last month. And off the back of that, I think this was, actually, this was actually going to be the target ever since that race. He's probably a horse that obviously likes York, even though he's, he has a course and distance win. It was quite some time ago, but he has run some really solid races over course and distance since. So I like the fact that he handles this track. And the fact he returned to form last time out, just a month ago, really did look like he was going to come back to form. His best form actually is around this time of the year as well. And he was only beaten just over two lengths by Ali's Dancer, which puts him on his best form right up there, probably at the top of my list in this race. He also comes here off an unchanged mark of 87. Conditions are suiting him and stepping back up to seven furlongs should suit him really well. He's got plenty of pace and I wouldn't necessarily mind if he hit the front too quickly because he has, he has actually got quite a fast speed figure as well. He's a strong finisher. And I'm going to give him a chance here at 10 to 1. Like I said, he's been quite difficult to win with. But he ticks all the boxes this time around. If he's going to get his head back in front soon, it looks like now might be the time. This was um, a horse very much on the trend and back in the right direction. And off the back of his latest run, I imagine this was uh, was going to be the target since that day. So I think Woven at 10 to 1 is a pretty decent each way price himself. So that's three selections for Saturday's race. And I'm just going to recap those for you in time order. Uh, we've got Lord Melbourne in the 150 at York at 7 to 1. Dancing Magic in the 205 at Sandown, just gone out to 11 to 2. And then in the 225 at York, we like Woven at 10 to 1. Three decent selections. 
and hopefully we can get back into the weekend previews with a nice couple of winners and take a little bit of profit. Maybe even worth backing these three as an each way patent to make sure you're getting your singles on those two because that probably would give us profit for the rest of the day and anything else could be a bonus. So there's three selections for you for Saturday. Don't forget to come over and check out my column over on betting.co.uk. We've got loads of content coming up for next week with Royal Ascot only round the corner. I've already put two anti-post selections up and I'll pop the link in the description for you to go over and check that out. But of course, before you do anything else and place all of your bets, make sure you claim your free bets from BetMGM using the link in the description below to help you on your way this weekend. Good luck, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. If you can hit that uh, like and subscribe button, that would do me the world of favours. Good luck with your bets this weekend and I'll see you all real soon.